Hey guys, welcome to Boho Jewel on YouTube. My name is Sandra and I'm going to share with you this new crochet stitch that I discovered over this past week. Now, if you guys watched my first video, I showed you how to do a single crochet dishcloth, which was super simple and great for beginners. And I also promised you that if as I start learning more, not if, but as I start learning more crochet stitches that I will share them with you as I learn them. And I found this really fun waffle stitch and it's called a waffle stitch because it's our waffle pattern rather but because it looks like a waffle so I made a couple of washcloths with it and I really like this for a washcloth because it's super flexible so the pattern the stitch ends up staying really flexible I found this really lovely soft cotton yarn and it is Burnett Handicrafter Cotton Deluxe and they have several colors in it but I found this and I thought I would try it because it's a nice soft cotton if you remember um, last week I told you the cotton that I use for my dishcloths is a little rougher and it's great for dishcloths but um, I wouldn't want to use it to wash myself so there's one that's completed and these end up being about 8x8 eight eight. so um, pretty good size you could also use this to make anything to make a scarf so if you wanted to make a scarf you can make it a little more narrow maybe and then longer obviously or you can make it a little smaller for baby washcloths so <coughs> excuse me let's get started so all you're going to need is some yarn some scissors and your crochet hook and i'm using a number five crochet hook so let's do let's use the teal yarn so let's get started with our first knot. So simply loop that yarn over, over the finger, pull that front one up, and <laughs> scoop that back piece out, and boom, you've got your first knot to start with. Okay. Now, the way that I saw this described is that it's in multiples of three plus two. So that just means that depending on the length of the size of the project that you're working on, you need to do them in threes. Okay, so three, one, two, three, and then however long you want to make it. And once you're done in your threes, you add two more. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to do 29, so three times 9 is 27 and then plus my 2. Okay, so 3 and then you just do a chain. Let me slow motion the chain. So you pull it around 4, 5, get my camera to stop wiggling, 6, 7, 8. So that's 27, and then two more. One, two. <coughs> and I feel like that's a pretty good size for an adult washcloth. Okay, so now the stitch that we're working with on this is a, um, a double crochet. So the way that you do a double crochet, I'm going to do a little demonstration of a double crochet for you before we get into it. So it's really not that complicated. What you're going to do for your double crochet is you loop your hook around, but instead of pulling it straight through like you do with a single crochet, you loop your hook around and then you take that little loop and put it through your stitch. Okay, so now you have three loops on your hook and then you hook it around that and pull it up. Okay, so now you have three loops on your hook. You're going to pull this through the first two and then you're going to pull it through the next two and I'll show you that slow motion as we get started and then that is your double crochet. Okay, so that is the stitch that we're going to be working with is a double crochet stitch. Now for this particular pattern we have our 29, our row of 29 here. You're going to double crochet in the third loop from the hook. So the one that's actually on the hook doesn't count. So one, two, three right here one two three you're going to loop it around go into that third stitch pull it through and then through the first two loops and then the next two loops and that's your first double crochet in there 
and then you do this all the way to the end. You're going to double crochet all the way to the end. So loop it around, put it through the next stitch, pull it up, through those two loops, and the next two loops. Around, through the stitch, two, and two. So we do that all the way down and this is going to be our first row. Now you'll notice that you're going to need to hold your yarn pretty comfortably. You definitely don't want to hold it too tight because if you get it really knotted up and super tight it's going to be hard to get the flexibility to move that hook through the spaces into the next chains into your next stitches. So you want to keep it pretty relaxed and again that just comes with practice and you kind of get a feel for how you need to hold your yarn, how tight you need to hold your yarn. Let me come up off the table. I can feel myself bouncing my camera. Sorry guys. <laughs> the more I do this the better I'll get at the technical aspects of it. I promise. Let me pull some more yarn. Maybe one day I'll even have a professional film crew. Who knows? <laughs> but meanwhile, we'll make it work, right? We'll Tim gun it and make it work. So this is basically your first row is double crochets all the way down. Just remember to skip those first three chains and then you're going to double crochet all the way down. And like I said, I started with a chain of 29, so 27 plus the two. So if you wanted to do like a baby washcloth, maybe something smaller, you could do maybe even just 21, like chain 21 and then add your two. Um, just kind of play around with it. Or if you wanted to do a scarf, you know, you could do a thinner, a shorter chain to create more of a rectangle shape. almost to the end. Okay, and then we have our last chain right here. So double crochet into that last chain. And now you're going to chain one pull it through and turn it. So that is your first row and it should look something like this. So you have this nice solid little row of columns. Now on the second row after you've chained one and turned you're going to double crochet in your first stitch right here. It's that first stitch. So same thing. Pull that thread. Double crochet. And now we're going to switch it up a little. You're going to do what's called a front post double crochet. So you see all these little posts that you've created. It's a double crochet, but instead of going through this next stitch, you're going to pick up your yarn and you're going to go behind that front post to finish your double crochet stitch. Ta-da! So you actually have it through there. Now we're going to, for this pattern, double crochet in the next two stitches. So you pick up your yarn and go into the next stitch. Double crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. Pull some more yarn. And then again, you're going to double crochet in front of that post. So you have your stitches and then the next, instead of the next stitch, you're going to go in front of this post right here and finish it in front of that post. Whoops. Oh, well, instant replay. <laughs> I feel like sometimes when I try to do these things slower, it actually makes it harder. Isn't that silly? Okay, there we go. So you'll see you're creating a raise right there. Okay, so again, you don't want to hold, so then two more, double crochet into the stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, 
and then a front post double crochet. So that is the pattern for your second row. And again, you don't want to hold your yarn too tight. You don't want to get all bunched up in it because it's going to make it really hard to work with. You also don't want it too loose because you don't want it to get wonky. <clears throat> so find that happy medium. <coughs> Excuse me. So then that's the pattern across the front. So double crochet into the stitch twice two double crochets into the stitches, and then a front post double crochet into the stitch, into the second stitch, and then front post double crochet. So you can see the pattern starting to form a little bit. One, whoops, one, two, and then in front of the post, the very next post. Now, as you get further on, you'll kind of start seeing, and as you do a few of these, maybe especially too, you'll start seeing the pattern. You won't have to necessarily count it as much um, because you'll see the rows forming. But especially on these first few rows and the first couple of times you're doing this, um, you definitely want to be paying attention. <laughs> Nothing is more frustrating than really rocking and rolling along and then realizing you have to undo half of it because you messed up on one spot. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> Although with this pattern, you, you won't get too far before you realize you've kind of made an oopsie, I think. So it's a pretty, um, pretty kind pattern, I think. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the end. So we're doing our double crochet into the stitch, double crochet into the stitch. And then you'll see you have one post left, which is perfect because we're going to front post double crochet into that one. And then you see this little guy hanging on here. You need to do a double crochet into that last stitch. Okay. Oh, I missed it. That first last stitch can be kind of tricky. <laughs> there we go. Because it's cur on that curve. So there it is. Let me see if I can show you. So get it through that curve. And there we go. So that is row two, okay? Now we're gonna chain one and turn it. And it doesn't look like much yet, but then we're going to get to row three. Now row three is basically a pattern as well. It's just the opposite of row two, and that's what's gonna end up giving you this really cool waffly effect. Now you'll notice that on one side of it, it still has like a really cool texture, um, but it's really just on one side that you see the deep waffly squares in there. That texture is pretty too, but this is where you're really going to see your, your pattern where you're working, which is pretty helpful. So row three, we chain and turn, double crochet in the first stitch, always double crochet in that first stitch on both rows. And now the difference is we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, double crochet in the next stitch. Then you're going to front post crochet in the next two. So front post, front post, and then one double crochet in the next stitch, just one and then two front post double crochets. Okay, two front post double crochets. So even though, oh my, lost my thread. So even though at the beginning of this row we did a double crochet in the stitch and then the stitch and then the front post, that's the only time you do that is on the turn. So now we're double crochet in two front posts, one double crochet in the stitch, 
right here, and then again, two front post double crochets. And we'll work this to the end. So double crochet front post, double crochet front post, and then double crochet into the stitch. So you kind of see where it works in that patterns of threes, right? Front post, front post, and stitch. And that's where you can see those posts starting to take shape there. And you're not going to notice a really deep waffle shape until a few rows in, I've noticed. That's when it really starts to show and you can really start getting all ooh and ah about it, for me anyway. <laughs> Actually, the first couple of times I did this, I thought, I did it right the last time. Why doesn't it look like a waffle this time? And I realized I was doing it right. I just needed to get a few rows in for it to actually be very clearly visible, to get those squares clearly visible. Okay, so we'll work to the end here, and I want to show you how you're going to finish this row, and then basically everything is just repeating rows two and three. Say hello to my yarn. There we go. Okay, so we're coming to the end. So front post double crochet. Another front post double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet in the stitch. But we're not going to do another front post double crochet because you can even kind of see how that looks different. So we're actually just going to do another double crochet in the last stitch. So, and then chain and we'll turn. So, on the second row, that's kind of the difference there, or on the third row rather, the difference is you're going to double crochet in that first stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and then front post, front post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, all the way to the end. But then after your last two double front post double crochets, you're going to actually just do two double crochets into the last stitches. <laughs> and then we're going to turn it and you go back to what you did on row two. So we're basically just repeating rows two and three now. So we chain and turn, and then you double crochet into that first stitch. And then you're going to front post double crochet into the next stitch. And then you'll have your two double crochets into the next two stitches. So you can see where that pattern forms. And if you feel like you get lost at the beginning, just think about that. Row two is going to be all of your even rows as you're counting, and row three is going to be all of your odd rows as you're counting. So it definitely helps to have it written down. I have my little cheat sheet. Um, I tend to translate things into what I can understand. <laughs> so I'm happy to put that in the comments below if, if that maybe will help somebody else. But you can kind of start seeing that waffle pattern. So then you just do that all the way down. You want to maybe end on a row two just to make it look a little more tidy um, because you'll see, where's my waffle side? Um, because if you end on a row three, then you're going to be kind of ending halfway here. So it kind of takes half of your row away. And so, I mean, and that could be okay depending on the size you want, but you see where you have your row one, two, and three down here on the bottom. So if you end on that row two, it gives you just a nice square finish there. So then once you get to the last row, let me just pull this out for you. So then we have our last double crochet into the hook, into that last stitch, right? And then we're going to pretend we're chaining one, but we're going to pull it all the way through. And we're going to tuck those ends in. 
find my needle here and um, you can use a fairly good large size needle and I like to use one for these that's not too pointy on the end I like to use a tapestry needle that's kind of dull <laughs> because um, I tend to get wrapped up in my head when I'm doing things like this and I get a little clumsy so yeah anything I can do for safety and comfort <laughs> so but you don't need a very sharp needle and then we just take this and we're just going to work it through very easily into our piece just to kind of hide that thread this one's so loopy just to tuck the thread away and you just want to be gentle with this you don't want to actually pull your your stitches apart so that would be frustrating after all that work right just kind of loop it through a few spaces just to tuck it away and then trim it and you've hidden that and do the same thing with the little loop that you start with on the end I've already tucked that one in and there it is um, again so then I work from about eight inches to eight inches so and then that's all you have you guys and it's really fun and it may seem a little confusing at first especially if you're a beginning crocheter but once you get the hang of that double crochet stitch and just count those rows it's really a fairly simple project I think so I hope that you enjoyed that let me know if you guys try this project um, or if you have a crochet stitch you would like me to research and maybe figure out how to do and teach you because I'm looking for all kinds of new things we're in the winter months so craft show season is down I'm working on my Etsy shop and other things as well of course but um, this is the time of year that I like to experiment with some new different things so let me know what you might be curious what kind of craft you've been interested in trying and I would love to try my hands at it so have a great day you guys if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do I'll be doing more crochet tutorials as I learn things as well as jewelry techniques jewelry making techniques and I'll be coming up very soon with some business tips and things that work for me as well in my off season so have a great day guys thanks